Hi, everyone, and welcome again to another uh, Clean Machine episode. This one is going to be about optimizing your hormones. I'm very excited about this episode because for me, this is what started my whole journey uh, starting Clean Machine. We're going to talk about that in a second, but first, I've got to get to the uh, disclaimer. Uh, I am not a healthcare professional. Nothing I share in this video is intended as advice to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease or condition. Okay, so hormone optimization for men and women. Now, this is important because obviously men and women both have a lot of the same hormones, like testosterone, like estrogen, like DHT. They're in both of the bodies, whether you're male or female. Now, we can produce them in different ways, uh, like the women through ovaries and men through uh, uh, testicles, um, but they can be both generated through different avenues. And, you know, the big misconception, I think, which is probably came from the prevalent use of steroids over the last couple of decades is that testosterone, you boost testosterone levels as high as you can go and you build a lot of muscle and that's how it works. And that is not at all how it works. And, and look, you know, when you see uh, marketing out there, advertising out there that says boost testosterone 10,000%, Oh God, if it actually really did that, you'd be in such a mess hormonally and you'd have so many negative side effects. Uh, it would be a horrible experience. That is not what you want. This is not what I suggest. Um, and, and look, uh, what we do is try to look for the best plants that nature has to offer that can help our bodies adapt to a place where we're in optimal states of hormone levels. Now, I had turned 50 and I was getting low T um, and I was losing muscle and I wasn't in shape. I was gaining belly fat faster. And many of you have probably experienced this and, and this can happen over age but it's not necessarily about age. You can have healthy levels all the way through to the end of your life, um, appropriate to the age, but you know, how do you get there and how do you make that happen? So I would have never created any product that messed with hormone levels because there's a delicate balance here. It's a very complicated system. When I was in college studying physiology, learning the systems of the body, the endocrine systems, uh, these hormone systems are very complex. There's lots of different branches to them and they affect lots of different things. So elevating just testosterone can really mess up all of the rest of the hormones and well, not all of them, but many of the rest of the hormones in the body. So what's really important here is to modulate each one of those little hormones and adjust them in ways to rebalance and re-optimize your system so you get the results you're looking for. Increased libido, increased strength gains, increased muscle gains, lower body fat, better sleep, better self-confidence that, yes, I can get this done in the gym. We want that. We want to feel proud. We want to feel confident. Um, and that's for both men and women. But there's appropriate ways to do these, and that's by properly modulating and balance these to get to optimal states, not super physiological states, which is what you see with people taking steroids. Their levels are way too high, and then it sends everything else in bad directions and creates a lot of negative side effects. So let's jump right in here. Just by boosting testosterone is not the whole story. There are actually six phases. I'm gonna pull those up for you so that you can see them. So right here, we're looking at um, uh, five different phases. And the sixth one is uh, to be concerned with prostate. Um, so when I first started, I said, look, I'm never gonna touch this testosterone category because if you elevate testosterone too much, you run the risk of prostate issues. Now, part of the problem here was that most of the things taken for prostate could actually lower testosterone levels. So I'm like, well, this really sucks. 
the two biggest concerns, two of the biggest concerns for men as we are aging is low testosterone and prostate health. So if I increase my pro t testosterone, I run the risk of prostate issues. But if I take something for my prostate, I run the risk of more of my testosterone. And that's a terrible seesaw. It's a, is it what we call a zero sum game. One is plus and the other is minus. And if you increase one, you reduce the other. Uh, that, that really sucks. That's not a great option. So when I found this amazing cactus flower, Oh my God, it was a game changer for me. I was so excited because the first time I've seen something in nature that balanced and, and, and modulated both estrogen and DHT while increasing testosterone at the same time. I've never seen like anything like this in nature before. And that's why I was so excited. I was so excited. I got 10 people, uh, about 10 people to try it. And we all had our blood tested for testosterone levels. Uh, and then took it for five weeks, just this one cactus flower. And after five weeks, I doubled my testosterone. And my friend, my best friend, uh, actually almost tripled his testosterone, 273% increase. Now, we both had low T because we're older guys, but every single body, person within that group all got close to doubling or over doubling their testosterone levels from a low T state. This is bringing your body back into its optimal states, not overloading the body with testosterone. Because remember you do that. Look at this chart in front of you. Once you elevate that testosterone, it can convert to estrogen or DHT, can cause other negative side effects. And those two can have a whole host of negative side effects on their own. And we're gonna go over why that's important. So, after finding this, I was so excited by the results. The, it had uh, published research on it. It had cell studies. It had two in vivo clinical trials in human clinical trials, living human beings. So both cell st studies and confirmed in living human beings, I was stoked. So you could actually improve your testosterone levels and improve your prostate issues at the same time with the same herb. I'd never seen anything like this in nature before. I was so excited about this bind that I actually started Clean Machine in order to launch this product. I know that there are a lot of people, men, dealing with prostate issues. And there are a lot of women losing strength over periods of time and gaining body fat. And, and this is such an important thing. With this down regulation of our optimal hormone state, we can re-upregulate it to get back to that level. Now, what did it do for me? It took me from low T, gaining body fat and, and, and losing muscle, and losing strength into at 54 years age, taking the stage and taking first place in physique. That's amazing, natural physique, no steroids, drug-free. And took first place also in, in and became a champion, natural bodybuilder is too as well. So both physique and bodybuilding, over 50 years of age. That's amazing. I'm now 57 and I've still got the guns. And that is because I am keeping optimal states using natural herbs. These plants out there, they can really be helpful when they work with the body. They're adaptogenic style herbs. Now adaptogens are very different than a lot of other herbs out there. Adaptogens help regulate up and down balance. So they try to bring your body back into optimal states, not just stimulate it like caffeine just stimulates energy and takes it all in one direction but then it burns out your adrenal glands and does lots of other uh, has lots of other negative side effects can tax you out can make you drowsy can give you headaches can lots of side effects and and there's the difference between adaptogenic herbs which regulate if you're too stressed it calms you down if you're not if you're too too sluggish it actually elevates energy so it it helps your body do what it's supposed to better and that's what I love about these herbs in this class of herbs called adaptogens, because they actually support your body in being more efficient, more effective at what it's supposed to do in a perfectly healthy state. So what's in this? <laughs> 
So very first step, these are five different phases in here. The very first step we're going to look at is DHEA, phase one. So DHEA is the precursor uh, through andro into testosterone. This is what our body normally uses to create testosterone. In women, slightly different. Women can uh, uh, use different hormones to convert their estrogen back into testosterone. Um, but DHEA is the master hormone. This is the one that can basically create almost any other sex hormones in our body, estrogen, DHT, or, or, or testosterone. So we want to have a good supply of DHEA. Sensorial ashwagandha. Now, this is a very specific type of ashwagandha. It is actually shown in published human research, and you can look it up, type in sensorial S-E-N-S-O-R-I-L, sensorial ashwagandha. And the reason we use it is because it is the most studied ashwagandha out there available. Um, multiple published human studies on it, uh, both for helping thyroid, which is great, because look, if you're using uh, cell block 80 to try to increase um, testosterone for overall body performance, overall body composition, which is increased muscle and strength and lower on the body fat, well then uh, helping with a uh, healthy thyroid too is also important for metabolism. But anyway, back to this, boosts DHEA by about uh, 32%. So now you have about a third more DHEA, the building blocks, the precursor to testosterone. Now that can help elevate testosterone levels. So what happens when your gets to the next level? Well, phase two, we have binding agents. Now, this is normally just a good thing because binding agents can help us if we get too high a level of testosterone, it'll bind to it, make it inactive to bring that level back into its normal range. And this is somewhat how testosterone as steroids work is it overloads that system and the body doesn't have enough binding agents and it forces the body to build muscle much more than it ever would in a healthy, natural, normal body. Um, and that's why you can get 300 pound guys with god awful amounts of muscle. Uh, but unfortunately, all that stimulation can have a whole host of negative side effects. And maybe I'll leave that for a different episode. But if you want to increase naturally and get your body back into its optimal state, this is a way you can do it. So, but once you get to here, it, you see this little B in the phase two, that is bound testosterone. So it's bound to a binding agent. One of the most common binding agents is this one, SHBG, stands for sex hormone binding globulin. Well, testosterone is a sex hormone and it binding globulin. Globulin is a, a protein that actually binds to the testosterone and inactivates it. Um, so inactive T or bound T really doesn't do anything, it hangs out um, and then is uh, eliminated, excess is eliminated th um, through the normal processes. Um, so what you want is a little bit more free T because free T is the next step. But how do you get past that binding level? Well, an interesting study showed that vegans actually had about a 13 percent higher testosterone level than non-vegans, people who are eating meat, omnivores, even vegetarians. Vegans had the highest levels of testosterone. But unfortunately, they also had the highest levels of sex hormone binding globulin. Now, that was an issue because it basically gave us no advantage whatsoever in testosterone. And then if you, through health issues or whatever, uh, start to have downtrending testosterone, wouldn't it be nice to have that vegan advantage back? Well, that's exactly what I designed this to do. So there is a herb called uh, stinging nettles. Now, don't worry, it doesn't sting you really. <laughs> it only does that if you actually take the whole plant up. But this is crushed down into an herb and doesn't do that. Um, it is actually a natural vasodilator, increasing blood flow, which is a really good, healthy thing. Um, but stinging nettles actually binds to, uh, has the highest binding affinity of all the herbs that they've studied. And we use a very potent 12 to one extract of the herb. This makes it very effective, but you also wanna increase that free tea. Now that you've prevented some of that binding activity going on, you're gonna have more free tea. But this part is so important, we actually add boron. Boron is actually shown to boost levels of um, free testosterone. So you're binding some of that uh, 
binding agent so that you have more free tea and then using boron to actually increase that free tea even more. Boron's great for bone strength and bone health too. So double, double benefits there. Um, so now that you've got more free tea, the body can see a lot of free tea and go, well, oh, all right, well, let's convert some to estrogen and some to DHT. Um, now the body uses enzymes, aromatase enzyme to convert to estrogen and 5-alpha reductase enzyme to convert to DHT. So this cactus flower is amazing. Now I'm going to switch slides here for a second and show you this cactus flower because this research is amazing. So this DM33, that's our trademark material. Nobody else on the planet has DM33. That is our trademark material, and we are the only ones with it. This is the study using DM33 and only found in cell block 80. And this is the before and after the usage. And you can see what powerful impact it has. This is where cell block 80 gets its name because it is shown to block both estrogen and DHT by 80%. Now that's pretty fantastic, but this was done in human cell studies. And these were cells with a high affinity to binding to, to figure out what that. So does it happen in real world? Well, obviously with this big of reduction in DHT, DHT is a big concern because it's related to prostate health. So they did just that. We look next at the real world studies by two published human clinical trials. And that was, let me look it up real quick here. It was uh, 58 men with BPH and for six to eight months. And then the other trial was 30 men, small groups, but still two different trials showing up to 80% reduction in prostate issues. Now that's pretty significant and very exciting. Um, so you've got one of the most powerful that I have ever seen, cactus flower. Remember the cactus flower itself, the, the flower is the sex organ of the plant. Um, so the sex organ of this cactus flower, this cactus flower is really good at surviving on this planet. It's actually the most prodigious plant on the planet. It grows in extreme cold, heat, radioactivity, almost anything. The plant can survive anything. It's a cactus. Uh, extreme dry, extreme wet, doesn't matter. It survives it. But it's also really good at controlling its hormones and reproduction. And that makes it very efficient and very high survival rate. Well, sometimes that translates to humans. Sometimes it does not. We are very fortunate that it does translate to humans in this case, because it is powerful at, at um, uh, bringing our hormones back into optimal states by reducing excess estrogen and excess DHT. Now, this is great because let's go back to the uh, slide here. Now you've got inhibition of estrogen and DHT. Well, you can lose up to 60% uh, of your free testosterone to, to being bound. And you can lose up to um, three to 5% uh, to estrogen and three to 5% uh, conversion to DHT. So that could cut your, um, uh, your total testosterone down significantly based on the little amount that you have left. So this could effectively significantly increase the testosterone remember testosterone is very powerful you don't need a whole lot of it to uh, cause the positive effects that you're looking for like the libido strength gains body fat control um, so now that we've boosted dhea we've stopped it from being all bound up so you have more free t We've inhibited it from, from converting to too much estrogen or too much DHT. Now you have optimal amounts of free testosterone, the active testosterone that can bind to your uh, androgen receptor sites in the muscle tissue, stimulating growth, increasing libido, activating all the health benefits, better sleep, better mood, uh, better strength gains, all these benefits can come from this appropriately at the appropriate optimal levels without sending all these other phases into uh, imbalance that would cause negative side effects. So for DHT, some of the negative side effects are um, hair loss. And, and why is this? Well, DHT is about three to six times more powerful than testosterone. So when there are high levels of DHT, that that uh, they're they're actually um, 
just the high levels of DHT with their three to six times more powerful than testosterone, they're slamming those receptor sites. And just like insulin, when you have too high of an insulin by eating too sugary, too fat a diet, then that the insulin is just slamming those receptor sites and they start to shut down. They start to say, that's too much stimulation, that's too much direction, let's receptor down. And then what do you have? Insulin sens desensitization, or what's more commonly known as type two diabetes. Well, when you've got that DHT just three to six times more powerful than testosterone, those receptor sites can shut down on your scalp. And bada bing, bada boom, when those receptor sites shut down, the hair follicles can shut down too. And this is what can cause hair loss. Well, imagine your receptor sites on your muscle tissue. If you've got really high DHT levels, they're hitting them too as well and shutting down. And now it's harder for you to stimulate muscle growth. And that's how too high levels of DHT can actually inhibit muscle growth. Now, some people are saying like, oh, but wait a minute, you know, if you block DHT, I've heard there's some negative side effects in that. Yes, but if you're only blocking DHT, let's pull up this graph again. So think of it as about a, like a hose with water coming out the end. And you ideally want the water to come all the way out and the testosterone to bind at the top at the androgen receptor site in the muscle. But if you poke a hole in the side of the hose, it's going to spring out some water. Consider that like estrogen. On the other side, if you poke another hole, it's going to come out as DHT. So you just think of that, that, uh, that hose as instead of going all the way up and giving you all the testosterone and putting it in the right place, you've got two holes in it, right? And some is estrogen and some is DHT. Now, if you close up one hole, what happens to the other hole? Yeah, it comes out more on the other side. Well, that's exactly what happens. If you block just DHT, you see, uh, we see uh, uh, an incidence where increased estrogen can happen. Well, increased estrogen, especially in men, has a negative feedback loop that actually suppresses testosterone because it's saying, wait, we're too much, we're too heavy on that, so it actually lowers testosterone. And that's how excess DHT causing excess estrogen can cause lower testosterone. So not only is it you downregulating the uh, receptor sites on the muscle by this heavy DHT slugging going on, you're actually causing a negative feedback loop to suppress testosterone. There's a double whammy. Now for women, DHT is important uh, that you don't get much because DHT is what they call androgenic. Andro meaning male and genic or genesis meaning change to. You don't wanna change to a male. <laughs> All right, now guys, we need androgenic hormones, D, uh, DHT during puberty. And that's why I suggest no one under 18 ever take cell block 80. Uh, you need your DHT, DHT rather, while you're going through puberty. Men do. Women do not. So this deepens our voice. It gives us more body hair. It does all the things. Remember, DHT at that age stimulates hair growth. But when you don't need any more DHT and you still have high levels of DHT and it's overstimulating those sites, shuts them down, and that's what causes the hair loss or male uh, pattern baldness. Uh, DHT again negatively affects the prostate and you saw what happened to that. Two clinical trials, 80% reduction in prostate issues. That's incredible. But for women, the DHT is not good either. Guys don't need it for acne or it can relate to acne because it causes more oil to be secreted through the skin, uh, causes aggression, not so good either. <laughs> Um, so you want to lower or get that uh, DHT level back down to its normal state so that you have a healthy sex drive, but without all those negative effects. Now, if you're blocking just DHT, you're going to get more estrogen. So that's what makes this so amazing. By blocking estrogen and DHT at the same time, you're not getting that negative feedback loop by blocking one causing the overexpression uh, of the other, blocking the estrogen causing causing overexpression of the DHT. What you want is to block them both equally. And that's what's so amazing about this herb. It does both at the same time. I've never seen any plant like that that handles this much inhibition for both of them balanced at the same time. That alone would make it so amazing, but we're not done yet. 
we still got phase five to go to. All right, so now that you've got all this free tea, you've blocked your negative side effects, both negative for women and men. Let's back up just for a second for that extra excess estrogen. So some women will say, hey, wait a minute, it blocks estrogen, don't I need estrogen? Yes, and your body creates all the estrogen it needs through the ovaries. Um, now, your body actually creates estrogen through many different ways. It can create estrogen through fat cells. Fat cells create estrogen. Estrogen then can create actually more fat cells, which then can create more estrogen, which creates more fat cells. That's a train you don't want to get on. And that's why women who have uh, are overweight have even harder problem than men in trying to get that weight down is because you've got this estrogen uh, creating fat cells, which create more estrogen, which create more fat cells, which create more estrogen. And you've got this amazing loop. Now, there's a proper reason for that. When your body needs to gain fat because you're carrying an extra person down in there, um, that's actually appropriate. So the body doesn't make mistakes. That is an appropriate mechanism. What's wrong is that we're eating too much and not exercising, and it's taking an appropriate mechanism and making it into a bad mechanism. But that's our fault. That's our choice of food, exercise, and stress levels. So this excess estrogen is something that you don't need. Remember, your body's producing all the estrogen it needs through its ovaries, wholly different mechanism. What you don't want is your own testosterone, the testosterone you need for strength, for libido, for energy, for overall health, for better sleep, better mood, all those things you want to as well. Everybody wants that. <laughs> Better body composition, more health, more energy, more stamina. That's a great thing. What you don't want is that excess estrogen. You don't want your testosterone creating over turning back into excess estrogen because that excess estrogen can pile up. And if your body doesn't eliminate it quick enough, it can turn to metabolites like E2, E3. These metabolites, estradiols and dions, these are much more powerful forms that can trigger some really, really negative effects. I can't talk about that because we're a supplement company, but I guess you can connect the dots when you're talking about estrogen dependent, you know what. Okay, we don't want to go there. And that's by piling on excess estrogen that your body can't use and can't metabolize and get out of the system fast enough. So by blocking that uh, um, testosterone from turning into estrogen allows your estrogen to do what it's really supposed to do and get that body fat down. Plus, you're not piling on excess estrogen that's going to lead to that estrogen fat, estrogen fat cycle. You can get off that bandwagon, start to drop weight and, and get back into healthy hormone levels. Remember, the sensorial ashwagandha also helps with T4 production. So it's shown to increase T4. This is your thyroid hormone, which regulates your metabolism. If you can increase metabolism, that increases the amount of calories you burn. This can help you get that. You ever notice as you age, wait a minute, I'm eating the exact same food, same amount of calories, same macros, and I'm gaining weight. Why is that? I'm exercising just as much, hour every day, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm doing the same things. Why is it? It's because your hormone levels have changed. Now, this is such an important key. You want to just optimize it. And it really doesn't take that much. You don't want to overload the system. Don't look at those supplements and things out there that are saying, oh, this dials it way up. No, what you want to do is modulate all these different things, including cortisol. So let's look at the chart last time. And before the free testosterone can bind to the androgen receptor site in the muscle tissue to impart all those positive effects, start muscle protein synthesis, increase strength gains, all those positive effects that we're looking for in healthy levels of testosterone, you can have cortisol. Cortisol can actually interfere with testosterone. Now, here's an interesting study. They showed that by decreasing cortisol, you can increase testosterone. Now, why is that? Why? It's called the cortisol to testosterone ratio. Because if you increase one, the other goes down. If you increase the other, the other goes down. So they have a correlating, corresponding impact on each other. And there's a good reason for that. Testosterone builds muscle. Cortisol tears down muscle. 
you can't do both at the same time. You can't build the building and tear it down at the same time. So the body says, okay, whichever level is higher, I'm gonna go with that one. <laughs> and if the other level is higher, I'm going with that one. So you, if you are stressed out during the day, cortisol levels go up. If you stress out writing and your work at home, cortisol levels go up. You get home and the kids have wrecked the house. Cortisol levels go up even more. We're at chronic cortisol levels. We are stressed to the max. We are stressed in almost everything we do. Uh, relationships, jobs, kids, family, work, coronavirus. We're stressed out to the max. And that stressed out cortisol is bringing down our testosterone levels. The higher we are stressed, the lower and more we are suppressing our T levels. And this gives us that down in the dumps doldrum. It, it, cortisol increases body fat, it tears down muscle tissue, it suppresses testosterone. Now, there's an appropriate place for cortisol. You don't wanna eliminate it, it's not a bad guy. It's appropriate because if you are stressed, your body needs to find scavenge energy as quickly as possible. And if it is stressed, then your body is saying, well, let's store some extra energy, which is storage of fat, and let's find some extra energy, which is tearing down muscle tissue. Now, if you're in a short period where you gotta run away from a tiger, that's a good thing. One, find energy wherever you can get it and go grab it, because you're gonna need it to run like hell. Two, you're gonna, you may need it again to run away from that tiger, so let's store up some of that energy and save it as body fat. That's, again, an appropriate, healthy response short term, just to run away from the tiger, not long term. And we are keeping ourselves stressed for long periods of time. This is called chronic stress. This is not healthy stress. Healthy stress is appropriate. Chronic stress has very serious negative impacts on us. So that's the last piece that you want to do. And cortisol, the central, uh, the central ashwagandha, is clinically proven. Two published human clinical uh, studies showing it um, decreased cortisol by 24%. And that's what you need to just tip the scales so that testosterone can win out. You don't need to bludgeon cortisol. It's good to keep it in check, keep it low, and keep it uh, in normal, healthy levels so that testosterone can do its thing. That testosterone can cross that finish line and do exactly what it's supposed to. there. Okay. So we look at, um, sorry about that interruption. My uh, mic went off for a sec. Cortisol. So number one, we want to boost that DHEA level 32%. Number two, we want to not have it bound so much. If you're vegan, that's awesome. 13% more testosterone. That's awesome. That'll make you more muscle gains. Unfortunately, we actually, <laughs> vegans have higher levels of sex hormone binding globulin, but if you actually use stinging nettles, you can switch that up so that extra testosterone that we're naturally producing as vegans in a plant-based diet, we get that advantage. 13% more plus you boosted your DHEA levels. Now you've got a healthy level of free testosterone getting into the system. Plus that boron to help boost that free testosterone as well. Now, you don't want that free testosterone converting even to more estrogen and DHT, which is mostly one of the negative side effects. In guys, the excess estrogen uh, leading to breast growth in men, uh, the DHT leading to hair loss, acne, prostate issues. Uh, women, that excess estrogen can lead to some very, very, very serious uh, elevated estrogen levels, which can lead to um, cellular disruption or um, uncontrolled cell growth. And you know you don't want that. Um, and then, of course, estrogen can lead to that estrogen fat cycle gain. DHT, you don't want that excess DHT because that is masculinizing. You don't want man hands. You don't want hair growth. And by blocking that DHT by over 80%, this is a great product to use for women so you can get that elevation in testosterone without the risk of that DHT. Testosterone is anabolic. It only improves muscle growth. It improves synthesis of muscle tissue and strength. 
That's what you want. It, and by blocking that estrogen, you're reducing the body fat. So with the DHT, you don't need that. That's not there. And guys over the age of 18 is not necessary. We should naturally be declining in our DHT levels because it's just not needed once we're into adulthood. And then that's phase three and four. Then phase five is finally your cortisol. And now you've optimally modulated all five of those while at the same time improving your prostate. If you're male, of course, women don't have prostate glands. Um, but this is how you can get all the benefits you are looking by using adaptogenic herbs that help regulate, help get our body back into its own state. And yes, you can take this on an ongoing period because remember, this is modulating our body. So it's, it's only helping our body get into optimal state. It's not overloading our system. So you don't have to cycle it like other ones that are overstimulating a, 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 a part of the a body. Because uh, when you overstimulate, you have to come off that so that your body doesn't actually downregulate its own production. So this does not interfere with your testosterone production or your estrogen production if you're women. What this does is optimize that testosterone so that it is more effective. Like, once again, I am more concerned about efficiency and getting the results from these natural herbs that can truly help. And there's some amazing plants out there that can help us get the results we are looking for for performance, but also for improved health, reducing our risk for prostate, acne, balding, hair loss, fat gain, all these things that are just undesirable. We can use these amazing plants and their gifts to us and healing natural effects on our body that can get us into optimal states and allow us to enjoy the best results we can get. At 57 years old, I am in one of the best shape of my life, and I am enjoying life to the fullest, and you can too. Eat plants, stay healthy, stay clean, stay natural, stay away from the drugs. Please stay away from the drugs. They'll wreck your body. Don't do that. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I formed Clean Machine and called it uh, Clean Machine. <laughs> Uh, to try to encourage you to keep this amazing piece of machinery that we're gifted, that we're born into. It's just an incredibly complex, but incredibly beautiful piece of orchestra. And when all the orchestra pieces are playing well and at their optimal level, they make beautiful music. I hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll have lots more episodes coming up. Uh, again, leave me your questions, comments. I always appreciate it if you could like or share. Let's get this uh, information out there because these plants are incredible. We're the only one with this uh, DM33 cactus flower plant. And I really like to share this with more people and hope that more men and women can enjoy these amazing herbs. Uh, but it requires your help to get this out there and let people know um, about the research that's out there. I will uh, post the links to the research so that you can read them and follow up on yourself again. Any questions you like, go ahead. This one's a little bit longer than um, usual, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some valuable information out of it. And uh, until next time, enjoy. <laughs>